Hey there guys, welcome to Digi Gaming Tips and apologies for getting a little bit obsessed with Gran Turismo Sport there for a while, but it was a lot of fun. But today I'm going to turn my attention back to the excellent Golf Club 2 and I had a comment previously from YouTuber APM59UK asking if I could give some putting tips. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to break it down a little bit scientifically and see if I can help you out with your putting scores. All right. So I took a quick look at the YouTube videos already out there talking about putting in the Golf Club 2 and they're using terms like practice and use your gut instinct and whilst those are important I think we could probably do a better job of breaking this down a bit more technically. The thing with the Golf Club 2 is there's no concept of a swingometer to sort of measure the amount of power on a swing against some sort of scale uh, which is nice in terms of the natural feel of the game. So let's see if we can find some shortcuts and tips in terms of distances, timings, visual indicators, which will help you to reduce your putting scores without spending days and days practicing. So it kind of makes sense that we look at the training section first, and HP Studios have a little section on putting lessons. So let's see if we can get some nuggets of advice directly from the developer. Welcome to the putting lesson. We are going to learn the ins and outs of putting here today. You know what they say, drive for show, putt for dough, folks. As it turns out, there's only three steps in the lessons and they're not particularly interesting, but let's start with the basics and see what we can take from it. I'm sure if you've played a few rounds by now, you've mastered the amount of putting strength needed for a 10-foot putt. No, 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 no. But if you're struggling to master that consistently, then let's break it down a little bit more scientifically. Visually, the 10-foot putt is just at the point where the top of the putter is about to clear the bottom of the ball. No, 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 no. Or, it's about where the putter reaches the middle of your right foot. And in fact, if you press L3, then you can change the viewing angle and you'll see that a little bit better that way. But actually, I prefer the default view for general putting. No, 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 no. But I don't think we're really getting anywhere with putting tips on visual cues alone. What's more interesting is to look at the timing. And what's rather handy is this video editing software gives me a readout to measure the time between lifting the club up and pushing it down. Just be aware that the number after the semicolon is the number of frames per second, and it was recorded in 30 frames per second, so we're basically measuring the number 30s equal to one second. So I measured the starting point to be about 202.25 and the end point to be about 203.22, so that's cool, that works out at 0.9 of a second for about 10 feet. Anyway, I'm going to go into much more detail on the timing for the various distance putts in the next section. So let's just finish off these lessons and on to step two. And it's basically teaching you about putting strength on a downhill slope. It's a 15 foot distance putt with a five inch vertical drop. The easiest way to summarize this is to take off a foot of distance for every inch dropped. So on this one, put it like it's a 10 foot putt. And just as a quick sanity check, let's check the time code on that one. So about 306.20 on the uplift and 307.19 on the down push. So yeah, that theory is holding good on this distance and this speed green. And lesson step three is teaching us about how the ball is gonna move or break on a downhill sideways slope. So using the same logic from lesson step two, it's 14 feet in distance and four inch down. So again, we're gonna put it as though it's a 10 foot distance put. And in terms of sideways movement, it's a little bit tricky to explain. But let me just make a few observations and see what it means to you. The little white blobby is on the green line to showing you the direction and speed the ball will move in as it passes over that piece of ground. So think of it as a tugging force pulling from the right. The problem is in this challenge is we've got a downhill as well, which means the ball's going to want to roll downhill and essentially there's a tugging force from the back pulling it forward. So a simple way to explain this is that downhill putts move more sideways because the acceleration pull essentially amplifies the effect of the sideways blobs. Whereas if you compare it to an uphill putt, it reduces the effect of the sideways movement. So in terms of how much to aim left in this kind of slope and this kind of downhill, let's roll the tape on a successful putt and then do some measurements afterwards. So in simple terms, we've aimed about a putter's head distance no, 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 no. to the left from the hole. For simplicity's sake, let's just assume the blobs are moving evenly across the whole distance and let's measure the time taken to do the distance travelled. So we hit it at 4.25.14 and it drops at 4.28.14, so three seconds of travelling time. And then if we roll it back again to when the grid was still on the green, let's see how far the white blobs move in three seconds. So starting at 3.23.14 and ending at 3.26.14. 
But then let's do the same for the downhill blobs. So starting at 323.14 and ending at 326.14. So to get your aiming distance for a downhill put, you basically add this to this, and then you'll need to factor in the view in perspective distance. And you've essentially got the amount to aim left on a downhill putt. <laughs> Just beware also that you're going to be putting in an arc across the piece of ground where the blobs are having an effect. So the further left that you go, the blobs not only have to bring the ball back into a straight parallel position, it then has to have further effect to pull the ball back in the direction of the hole, if that makes sense. <laughs> Now, I fully admit this is a bit of a weird explanation and there's all sorts of viewer perspective and different blob speeds to consider, but there is something in this and I hope it started you to think how you measure how much to aim left or right, depending on how fast the blobs are moving versus the ball's traveling time when it'll be influenced by those factors. Anyway, let's move on to the next section and see if any of those tips hold true for the different putting distances and different severity slopes. Great stuff out there, let's, let's move on. So it goes without saying really that the best place to try out some of these different techniques is on the putting practice green. And I'm going to start off by measuring the time of putter uplift against increasing putt distances. So that was another putt of about 10 feet, 13 feet, same thing. And in the measurement, start the uplift at 6.12.03 and the down push on 6.12.25. So again, that works out to be about three quarters of a second. And for a 20 foot putt, Uplift on 628.08 and down push on 629.06. So that's almost exactly a second. And for a 30 foot putt, and from this point forward, you're just going to have to take my word for the timings, works out at 1.13 seconds. And for a 40 foot putt, 1.26 seconds. And for a 50 foot putt, 1.45 seconds and for a 60 foot putt 1.6 seconds and for an 80 foot putt 1.75 seconds great putt by the way and for a 100 foot putt 2 SECONDS! And for a 120 foot putt. This one's difficult to visualise on the backswing alone because it's so close to the maximum limit. Two and a third seconds. And for the maximum Dave 144 putt. And this one's three inches uphill as well so we're going to fall a little bit short. So there it is, two and a half seconds is the limit. And HB Studios don't give you a swingometer, but happy to report DG Gaming Tips brings you the Golf Club 2 Swingometer. So I'll leave it at that in terms of distance for this video, but I will be taking the swingometer with me onto the course in the next video where we try and put some of these tips into practice. But suffice it to say, if you want to get more accurate with your putting distances, you need to come up with a way to count time. And in the absence of some sort of clever gadget timer that you can operate in parallel with the controller, the more likely solution is you're going to have to count the time in your head, in line with the timings that the swingometer is suggesting. So in terms of measuring the effect of sideways slopes, you can press the triangle button to get an overhead view of the green, and move it around with the left joystick. And the right joystick alters the angle of view. L2 to zoom out and R2 to zoom in. And if we count the number of squares between us and the hole, we've got 10 full squares and two half squares with a distance of 36 feet. So that equates to 3.33 feet per square or 10 feet in three squares. And in this case, if we count the number of squares where the blobs are having a significant effect, then that's 16 and a half feet of traveling distance. And if we cheat a little bit and roll the tape and see how long the ball takes to travel this distance on a 36 foot putt, 
Then we see it takes two seconds, and our head explodes. Ha! <laughs> but to finish the point, you need to guesstimate how long the ball's going to take traveling across those squares of influence, and then factor in the amount of ball turn that'll occur between the putter and the apex of the curve, and then from the apex of the curve, on the parallel path out to the hole. And another quick example, you can see that the first two blobs are having zero effect for the time that it'll take traveling across those squares. So it's really just the middle three blobs that you need to be measuring the apex of your curve against. Bingo. And as another example, when you're looking at the overhead view of the green, Look for blobs that are cancelling each other out and then you can basically just cast those aside and only concentrate on those that are making a difference. This is not the best example but in the next video I should be able to show you how this technique is used. Oh yeah baby! So guys, I'm going to leave this video here. Uh, that's been a lot to take in, especially if you're new to the Golf Club 2 putting scene. Um, if you're going to practice some of these tips, then I fully expect you to get worse before you get better. So what I've tried to do is not necessarily show you some sort of magical secret on how to hold every putt. Putting is an art form. It's a skill. You need to be able to see the apex of the curve based on what the slope's presenting to you. But I've tried to break down the mechanics of the Golf Club 2 putting, and hopefully it's seeded a couple of thoughts in your brain on how you want to improve your technique and fingers crossed your putting scores are going to reduce from this point forward. Um, but we'll try some more things in the next video where we actually take these things to the course and let's see how it goes. Please give me a like if that was useful to you and consider subscribing if you want to be notified about my new videos coming soon. Until next time, folks, happy golfing!